Did you know you can use PCG to scatter things around your level and then only enable physics on them when you wanted to? For example, this is one large PCG graph and it is all using instant static meshes. But when I play, I just push these around like normal physics objects. And if I go ahead and inject and then go ahead and reselect it, you can see they're still in static meshes. So this way you don't have to have an entire level filled with physics object all over the place. Instead, use PCG, scatter your assets around and then convert them to physics objects when you need them and convert them back. And that's what I'll be showing you guys how to do today. So with that, let's get started. So here we are in Unreal. I've gone ahead and added the third person project template as my base one, so I can go ahead and run around. And then I'm gonna go to edit plugins, search PCG, and turn on the procedural content generation framework and restart your engine as needed. So here I need a few little things. Let's start with the PCG graph. Let's go right click, PCG, PCG graph. And this is going to be our PCG physics cubes. I'll go ahead and open it up. Now in this graph, I'll just go ahead and use the volume of the PCG graph. So from the in, I'll drag out and do a volume sampler. I'll change the voxel size to something like 250 in X, Y, and Z. We don't need that many cubes. And then I will use a select points node right after that. And I'm only gonna keep 20% of all the points. And then because I know I'm gonna need to, I'm gonna use a transform points node and then offset all of these points up by 50 units in the Z axis. And then we can use a static mesh spawner, just a regular one. We'll add a mesh entry and we'll go ahead and add a simple cube with socket. The main thing we wanna do though, is for this static mesh spawner, I wanna add a tag. So I'm gonna search for tag here on top and I want to add a component tag to this cube. So I'll go ahead and add a tag here and I'm gonna add the tag physics. Now it doesn't have to be called physics, but it makes it known that this is going to be the tag we're going to be using. We're going to be looking for physics to enable it. With that out of the way, I'm going to drag this out into the world. Now we have way too many cubes, so I'll go ahead and shrink this down. So it's kind of like one layer of cubes here. And there we go. So we have a bunch of cubes and they're all over the place. Now I'm in 5.5 and if I press play, I actually run all the way through these because by default now the collisions are off. So we want to change up just a few more things in the PCG graph. So on the static mesh spawner, I'm going to search for collision. Instead of no collision, I'm going to just say block all. You can, of course, set it to block only the specific things you need, like static meshes and the pawns. For convenience, I'll just go with block all. And I also want to search for generate overlap events. This one right here. And I want you to make sure that it does generate overlap events. And that is pretty much all we need now in this graph. So now if I play here, I can run into the cubes and they're going to collide with me. So great. So we are got this part going. The next thing we want to do is control the actual character and make it so when we're close to the objects, they become physics objects. And when we're further away, they become regular parts of the instance mesh. So we're only the ones that are close to us are physics. To do that, I'll open up the third person folder, go to blueprints, EP third person character, and I'll just open it up. Of course, if you have your own character, you can use it on that blueprint instead. We'll just use the default one for convenience. So here's our character. We want to basically have a radius around him where things become physics objects and stop being physics objects. So I'll go ahead and add a new component. This is going to be a sphere collision component. I'll change the name to something to sphere physics. Now it's quite small here by default. So here on the right, I'm going to change the sphere radius from 32 something like 200. This allows us to push something pretty much right up next to us and anything further away of course, is not going to be physics related. If you're doing something with weapons or things of that nature, of course, you'll need to modify how this works. But in my case, I'm just doing it based off the distance from the player. So that way we can push things around. And that's honestly enough. Where you add this overlap component doesn't really matter. That is determined by you guys in terms of what you want to affect something and the range at which you want to affect it with. But now that we have this, we can go to the event graph and we can come down here and we can set up some overlap events. The first thing we're going to do here is just right click on sphere physics, go to add event on component, begin overlap. And while we're at it, I might as well go right click, add event on component and overlap. We're going to need both of them, so we might as well just get both of them now. So on component begin overlap, the first thing we want to do is check if it has the component tag that we added. So if I search for component has tag, the tag that we want to check is physics. Now, assuming that it does have this tag, we'll go ahead and do a branch here. And if it has it, continue on. Otherwise, we just ignore it. Now, this goes off of other comp for other component. Don't accidentally grab it from other actor because that is usually where you grab things from. But from here, we want to grab that component which is in our case going to be an instant static mesh component. So I'll drag from other comp and search for 
cast to instant static mesh component, and we're going to go off of true. So if it has the physics tag, go ahead and get the information from it. Now we're going to need this mesh component as a reference. I'm going to right click promote to variable, and I'm just going to shorten the name to ISM for instant static mesh comp for component and ref for reference. And now we have a copy of it here. The other thing we're going to need is the static mesh itself. So from here, I'm going to search for get static mesh and get the static mesh component here. And I'm going to promote this to a variable as well. This is going to be our physics static mesh. And we're just going to set it right after this. This way we can have access to these variables down the line instead of dragging all the way through. So now how does this all work? Basically what we're going to do is when we overlap the objects, we're going to remove the instances that we've overlapped in the instant static mesh. And then we're going to spawn the exact same thing in the exact same place, but with physics and movable enabled. This way, it'll be an instantaneous swap where visually you wouldn't be able to tell, but under the hood, it would have removed the original static version, replaced it with a physics version. And then later we'll go ahead and do the exact opposite, but we'll remove the physics versions and re-add the static version. So the first thing I want to know is what instances are overlapping. So what I can do is from this ISM comp reference, I can just drag out of here and I can search for get instances overlapping sphere, which is convenient because we're actually checking along a sphere already. So what I'm going to do is grab our sphere physics and drag it out. And then I want to get the world location and plug that into the center. And I also want to do get scaled sphere radius. And that is going to go into a radius. Now I want to keep it in world space. We were going to be working in world space for all of this. So this is great. And this gives us the arrays that we're overlapping. So I'll go ahead and promote this to a variable. And I'll call this indexes to remove. And we'll set that right afterwards. So now let's work on actually removing these. What we want to do is for each of these, we'll do a for each loop. I want to spawn R cubes. So from the loop body, I'll just search for spawn actor from class. The actor is going to be a static mesh actor. That's a regular one. Now we want to get the transform from the location. So I can grab our ISM comp reference, and then we want to get instance transform. This gets us the transform of a certain index and the index we're going to get from our array element. Be careful not to pull it from the index. We already saved the indexes in this array, so it's going from the array element. And make sure to check world space because we want to make sure it, again, is consistent in world space and then out instant transform goes into spawn transform. Now, while I'm here, I might as well just do the completed here as well. Because once it does everything, I wanted to remove the indexes so that way it clears those instances. So what I'm going to do is grab our ISM comp reference, drag out and search for remove instances. You want the plural one so you can get the array input. And the array, of course, is the indexes to remove that we're going to be plugging in here. And that goes from completed. So that's great. So we're spawning an actor, but we haven't set anything into it. And then we're removing the actual points. And this happens on overlap. So if I play now and I run over, I can just start removing cubes. It is technically spawning actors in the replacement of all of these, but they're empty. They don't have a static mesh assigned. They don't have any information assigned. So it effectively looks like they're disappearing. So let's go ahead and set up the all the information for the static mesh actor. So from here, I'm going to drag out. And the first thing I want to do is set mobility. And I want to make sure that the actor is set to movable because we're going to be enable physics on it. And then I'm going to drag out of this return value and get static mesh component as we're going to be needing to set this for pretty much all those things, starting with set static mesh. Now, what is the mesh we want to put? We want to put the physics static mesh that we got originally. So we can just plug that in. So that way we make sure to replace it with the exact same mesh. After that, I'm going to drag out and search for set simulate physics. And we want to turn on simulate physics after plugging in. And after that, again, all of, all of this is from the static mesh component. I'll drag out again and set for generate overlap events and go set overlap events. And we want to enable this. And the final thing is I want to add a component tag. So I'll drag out of here and search for set tags and we'll do set component tags, plug this in all the way through and I'll drag out of component tags, search for make array. And here I'm going to add a component tag called remove physics. So when it spawns this actor, it will be a movable object that we have originally piped into it. It will simulate physics and it will generate overlap events with a component tag of remove physics. So if I played now and I start to push this, you could see we already get this. But the thing is, this maintains it being physics components at all times. The original component is disappearing and these are now physics, but that's great. But they maintain physics. So if I press F8 to just eject, you could see that all the ones that I pushed here are still physics, but all the ones that I haven't 
are still part of this instant static mesh here. So we want to make sure that all of these physics ones become part of the original set once we're done. And for that, we're going to go with the end overlap this time. Again, from the other comp, we're going to check if component has tag. This time, we're, the tag we're checking is the one we just added, which is this one here. Let's go ahead and copy it and paste it in here. Grab ourselves a branch, just like we did for the original overlap. But this time, I'm not going to do a cast here. I don't need all, any of the information from it. We just need to remove it and swap it out. So this time from other actor, I'll drag out and search for get actor transforms. And then using our original instance static mesh comp reference, which is our component reference, I'll go and drag out and search for add instance. And the instance we want to add is in the transform location of this actor transform. And again, we want to make sure it's again in world space. And after we have added it, we want to destroy the original actor. So I'll just drag it out here and search for destroy actor. Because that is the original physics one. We no longer need it. It has been re-added to the instant static mesh component, and we should be good to go. So now if I hit play, I can run in here. These have become a physics object. This is all great. If I eject with F8, you could see all of the cubes, including the ones I just pushed, are still part of that same instant static mesh component. And if I was to run and just come here right next to this cube and then eject, you'll see only this one cube here is actually a live physics object and the rest are nice and performant. So instead of having every single object here in the world always be a physics object and take a performance cost, this works for us to maintain a better frame rate. Of course, you can swap this out and make this a little more advanced by making it work with multiple objects. So you can go ahead and check which object it has. There's a lot of stuff you can build on top of this, but the baseline is there for you to kind of play around with and configure to your needs. Now, as always, the project file will be available on the Patreon where you can join these wonderful people here and supporting what I do. It really means a lot. And if you'd like to join the community, the link to the Discord will be down below as always. Thank you again to the patrons. And if you're looking for more cool ways of using PCG in your games, check out this video right here where I show you one of my favorite features.